For years, British filmmakers have complained that there's no money available to make films, particularly first features. But while some have been whinging, others have seized the opportunity that being completely skint presented and shot their films with whatever resources they could muster. With cameras and film stock begged, borrowed or otherwise acquired, and the bank manager suitably baffled into giving them credit, a new generation of first-time producers and directors are doing it for themselves. I started the Independent Film Workshop about five years ago because I wanted to dispel the mystique about 35mm feature filmmaking. Today we're starting to make a film. We're shooting on 35mm, but we have a budget of absolutely zero. We've got film stock for free, which is left over film stock from other shoots, uh, commercials and rock videos. We've got a lab deal and some great actors, so fingers crossed. All filmmakers, regardless of budget, hope that their finished film reaches an audience. Paul Hills is a good example of a filmmaker that's crossed over on the low-budget arena. His yeah. first film, The Frontline, was made for a minuscule budget. Hello, Mr. King. My name is Marty Mud. I'm from the Raven Mud. Oh, see. Actually, I was quite well off because I was living on two pounds twenty a day, and I'd, I'd made a, I produced a film at National Film School, living on one pound twenty a day, and you know, by comparison, I really, I really was living the high life, you know. I really had made a piss up the wall. And that's tight. You think I'm gonna do it loose? <coughs> People, you know, put themselves right on the line for that film. People gave as much as they could, you know near the end of exhaustion. I suppose that they, you know, they believe that even though on this film, and this, this is the, you know, that even though this film doesn't have any money, that you're going to make another film, and that film is going to have money. So for them it's like investment. And many of the crew members I worked on the front line, you know, have, uh, you know, worked with me on Boston Kickout. What was in the forefront of my mind on Boston Kick-Out was to make a proper film and to not compromise at all. We looked around for private finance for the movie. Companies who invest venture capital money in high-risk kind of ventures and we found a number of companies, uh, one of which a Turkish company, a German company and a Russian company. And all those just keeps dancing in my head. That's my brother! When we finished the film, we, uh, we went to First Independent, who picked the film up, and, uh, you know, and that was great. He's very talented, uh, the film had a lot of energy, and I just felt this guy's going places, and I just felt we wanted, I really wanted to have this film in the company. I like something that's unique, something totally different, and if I find that, we'll go after it, you know, very aggressively. You know, I should talk to a guy around the corner who's making a film for no money with Roland Giff, so these things can happen. It's not that difficult. Look at me, this is my office. We don't have film lights, we have IKEA lights. We've got a camera for free, we've got everyone to work because they believe in the project. We've just got to do it. I think you just have to be completely single-minded, really. I mean, I saw a documentary about um, Sam Raimi and how he made The Evil Dead, and I just thought, oh, that's, that sounds such a great idea. Have you seen this guy? How you know his name is Guy? I can guess. You've seen him? I have seen this man. You have? Where? On this. Snap. The original thinking was like doing something for like sort of 10,000 and shooting over like a week. And then we managed to sort of raise for the shooting budget about um, sort of 15,000 from the local businessman. And he was aware of the stuff that I'd done I'm involved in festivals and stuff. And so it's quite sort of like um, jumping in there and, and hoping that you might get the, the money to finish it off. If you've got a limited budget, you just have to go down to the bare essentials. It does, um, you know, make you a lot more focused. What a gag. I remember hearing at the time when we were filming that something like Jurassic Park um, had had, they did 12 setups a day and they considered that really fast moving. And on one of the days we did um, 75 setups. This is cinema, this is fucking punch up. The editing sort of process was kind of the most depressing part of the whole, whole thing just because um, the excitement of the actual shoot has kind of died dead. We had a little broom cupboard in Pinewood, which was which seemed quite glamorous at first. But um, the editor didn't have anywhere to live, so he was like kipping on the floor. And so I'd come in, and he'd like it just you know sort of he'd have his rice krispies in his hand, and it's just like oh, this is so cold and depressing. None shall pass. Go on, you talk to him. How? A two, three PO, hand Swing bada bada, 
Swing. But once the film was all um, probably finished, it's a case of shopping it around. And eventually the small distributor picked it up, um, uh, Blue Dolphin, who picked it up and, and, um, and got it shown at one uh, cinema in the country, at the Prince Charles. Hey, that ain't fair. None shall pass. The main thing for me, which is just incredible, is it just got reviewed absolutely everywhere. Just, you know, just like getting a good review in Variety, like the week it came out, and you're sitting in a sort of like, on the dole in, in Bounds Green, and suddenly you're like in Variety again. You know, and that kind of sort of makes it worthwhile. You just think, this isn't really happening, this is quite funny. Okay, huh, that's good. It would be great if this film got distribution cinematically, and I'm hoping at the very least that I get invited to some big film festivals. You know, these things do happen. They might be rare, but they do happen. Everyone's going to say, oh, you can't make it for that money. Oh, no one's going to watch it. You know, every reason under the sun. There are a million reasons not to make a film, you know, and there are only one reason to make it. And that reason is that you want to make it. And so I say, make it, make it. Director Paul Hills, whose Boston Kickout is released on March the 3rd. The Frontline and Fistful of Fingers are available to buy on video now. And watch out for Elliot Grove's Table 5, which should be screened later this year.